everybody welcome back to my channel um, Karen here again um, and I'm called antiquity on this game and I'm here to show you some tips and ideas on how to fastly grow your your little colony and make it work for you in the most efficient way so as I've gone through part one and two of the basics, I just call that like your beginner mode. So beginner mode, you are really looking at trying to uh, increase your RSS and get the most out of all of your machines to the level of your queen. I also highly suggest that you stick at level eight for a little spell. A lot of people want to just try and advance, advance, advance. So what I do is I try to stay at level eight and then I can start increasing it and you want to get to level 16. So part one and part two of the basics is just trying to get your RSS. So now as you can see this farm is now got all of my RSS and all of my depots are all at level eight. So that's what you want. That is the basics, that's beginner of this game. So advanced beginner level is starting to understand what all these machines do and why you need them and what's the most important ones to upgrade. Because when you first start this game, there's so many things to upgrade and you just upgrade willy-nilly. And a lot of people say upgrade to your queen, but I actually think if you break this down into parts of what is going to benefit you at the time, then you'll get through this a lot quicker. Because to be really honest, I think my suggestion is to leave the soldiers for now and they are really sort of starting to get to your intermediate level. And so if you just leave that for now and you can start increasing those shortly. So the second step or advanced beginner mode, advanced basics is learning what these machines are or these little um, buildings that you've got and which ones are the ones that you should be concentrating on. So in advanced in advanced uh, beginners or advanced basics, my highest suggestion is to concentrate on certain buildings. So my suggestions are the Evolution Fungi, Troop Tunnel, Alliance Centre, Ladybug Habitat, 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 can't even speak properly, and Resource Factory. And if you can and you've got the diamonds to do it, your entrance would be really good. I would leave mutation pool for now because you need that with your soldiers and that's another thing. Also, special ant habitat is not necessarily just yet. That's not to say we... we we can't use it. There is benefits to have actually having the special ant habitat because you can station ants. But I will go through that in in a later video. But at this point, I just want to explain what all of these buildings do and why I suggest that this is your step two of your um, getting your farm colony ready and getting it strong quickly. So the main reason why I say troop tunnel is troop tunnel is your means to rally. So when you're rallying against other um, like little critters, so your lizards, and if you're doing an event like we've got right now, and if I just go back to that, and it's called Force of Tides, if we go into King of Shells, it actually tells you gather the power of ants to attack the crab. Now I've just showed you in the rallying one before how you do that. So hopefully you got an understanding of rallying and what it means. So troop tunnel is where you get your rally spots. If you've noticed when you actually rally, some people have two openings, some have one, some have four. How do they do that? They do the troop tunnel. So if we look at details of the troop tunnel, and look at more info it tells you at what level how many um, slots you have open so for me I've only got one at the moment you want to get to four and you can see that at level 11 you got the maximum amount of openings there is no more than four that is it all that it does is it increases the rally member attack and really it doesn't really matter that it's not such a big deal if you've got strong troops, which you will later on anyway, none of that's going to matter. So my suggestion is to try and get to, to 11. So when your queen starts upgrading, upgrade that troop tunnel um, to, to, level, um, to level 11. And then you'll get the four slots. So everyone can join in and the maximum amount of uh, people on your alliance can join in. So troop tunnel is for rallies. 
Um, so that's a really important one to do it. The Alliance Centre is also another one. If you upgrade the Alliance Centre, you can also have more people helping you if someone was to attack you. So that is the same. I still feel like that's kind of the same. You want to get it up to four as well. So four in uh, Alliance Centre is 15, level 15. So those two, I feel, are important to to go up however with the alliance center i still sort of think you know 11 probably you would get away with it because it's not often that when you get up to the higher levels that you're actually going to need all the support troops from your alliance the other thing is this ladybug habitat so if i click on the ladybug habitat and i click on trade it comes up with things that like resources so if you're actually running low on resources you can actually exchange one resource for another so if you look where i'm tapping here it says 6.2k of mushrooms and you can get 5k of honeydew so if you're running out of honeydew you could swap your mushrooms if you've got a lot of mushrooms which i happen to do click on that and you say buy and then you've bought that and i'm going to do that for this one as well and I'm definitely going to do it for the sand because you do go through a lot of sand and you go through a lot of leaves and that kind of stuff to upgrade. So you can do that. And then if you look up in the top here, you can actually do it again for free. So click it again and say yes, and it all comes back up again. So utilize the um, ladybug habitat. So if you upgrade the ladybug habitat, so I'll go on to details as well. Uh, if you go to like, hang on a minute, I think the maximum year is 16 slots. So what you want to do is try and upgrade it to the level of your queen all the time. So that it will give you those re extra resources and that's actually a really good thing to have. So definitely upgrade your ladybug habitat to the level of your queen. The other thing is, is this resource factory. So what this resource factory does is every 24, I think 24 hours, it could even be less than that. It could be 12. I think you get two lots in 12 hours. That when it actually comes up, I think I've already done it today, which is a bit of a shame. Um, so basically what happens is you get like a, almost like a rapid amount of resources all at once. So it just does all your rapids all at once and you get a substantial amount of resources. So if you're actually running low, or say you've been raided, and I always like try to keep that if I can for when I'm kind of desperate, um, you get extra resources. So this is for cultivators only. So herders and raiders do not get this machine. This is why it's a really good idea, and this will go. I'll go into this more with class levels, that each class that you go into gets a machine, and it's a good idea to go into every single class and get the machine um, that accompanies that class and build that machine up to get the best rewards from it. So this one's for cultivators only. Um, if I go over to my queen and go into class, raiders actually get a trophy storeroom, that's their machine, and herders get a resource tunnel. And this is where you can actually um, help your allies and you can buy goods and stuff from your honeydew. So it has, each, each class will have an extra thing, but I will go through your classes later. Also, you can increase your class um, experience by hunt, um, going to the, uh, what do they call it, the Land of Abundance and the Warzone Tree, or Warzone Construction, sorry, I apologise, and do the relative um, like tasks for your for your class, which is cultivated for me. There's no spots at the moment, but I will go into that a little bit more later. So that's those things. I actually increase my toxic fungi. Now, a lot of people say don't bother about doing it, but actually it's probably a little bit more useful than people actually give it credit for. So if we look at the details of um, the toxic fungi, at the moment, while it's in the smaller levels, not so much. But if you get up to the higher levels, like mine's kind of getting closer to up to 17. Um, basically, 
you've got a high kill rate of your uh, attacking ants that come in to actually attack your um, your ants. So even if someone comes in and you've got no garrison, and I will explain garrison a little bit more, but what garrison is is basically your troop defending. So I'm not going to have a garrison on there yet because my ants are just too weak and they'll just be slaughtered. So that basically means that if you've got no garrison because there's a lot of powerful people trying to raid at that particular time and you've got to understand that that if there's powerful people and they want to raid you, they're going to get your stuff and they're going to kill all your ants and your power's going to drop. So... This little fungi here will actually kill some of their soldiers and actually they'll be quite shocked by that. So um, I actually, in my main farm, actually got attacked by someone and my uh, like fungi was actually at a higher level and I actually only had a unit of very weak ants and I still won despite that they had a stronger uh, soldiers than mine and it was all purely due to this fungus because it actually killed quite a lot of ants more than I even thought it would. So yeah, I'm not quite sure exactly the percentages and how it works and you don't have to do it. It's fine if you want to leave that. It's not an urgent thing. Your priorities are Troop Tunnel, Alliance Centre, lady, um, Ladybug Habitat and Resource Factory. And if you can, highly recommend your entrance. Try and keep your entrance level no less than four, um, four like upgrades away from your queen so if your queen's like level eight this probably should be level four and so on um and also i've told you about your evolution fungi you want to get that up to level eight as well um, as much as your queen so when i'm looking at like your special ants nest your pro rally center your rally center troop camp all of your guardian, shooter and carrier ants nest, that's all sort of, you know, intermediate advanced ant stuff. So let's just leave that for now. That's going to come in the third section of increasing your ants power, your ant heal power and strength. And obviously when I start going through that, I'm going to teach you how to raid and all of that sort of stuff and how to get the most out of that. So, but at this stage, Concentrate on those ones that I've explained to you. The other thing that you could probably do would be to increase your healing ponds. They're always a good idea. Don't have to do it too fast. That's not a big deal. But now um, you really want to start concentrating on these things that I've said. So I'm going to click on to uh, my ladybug habitat and I'm going to start upgrading these now. And I'm going to upgrade my resource factory and I'm going to upgrade my troop tunnel and I'm going to upgrade my alliance center. So I hope that's helped you with step two, which I call advanced beginner. So your advanced basics and this will start helping you to get this, this um, ant heel strong. And I hope that you've found an alliance, an alliance that fits for you. I'm actually currently in the farm alliance, which to be really honest, I'd like to actually go to a sort of uh, a more active alliance. Not I'll probably come back here later on when the farm's a little bit stronger. Only because I'd like to use the farm to show people what to do. And I can't really do that in a very quiet farm uh, alliance. So that's that's the reason why. Um, definitely not minding being here. But yeah, I've got sort of something, some other things on in mind for this farm. So that's that and I will be getting back to you guys uh, about all the soldier ants soon. So talking about ants, your ants and your defenders and your, um, sorry, your um, guardians, shooters and carrier ants and collecting and that kind of stuff. And next it's probably next week when it all starts again i'll probably go into the war zone events a little bit more and show you a little bit more about that um the other thing i'm not sure i showed you was your exotic p i do think i did go through this actually before in one of my previous ones where um you got to get other members of your zone to water it for you or your alliance and they water it and you get diamonds for it 
Um, and yeah, that's about it for me on this one. And thank you so much for watching. Hope that you'd subscribe to my channel. Any questions or anything you'd like to actually know, let me know. I'm still really learning this game myself. So I'm actually learning as I'm teaching too. So I hope that some of this can sort of help you get strong, fast, and understand that you do not need to do all the things all at the same time. And Obviously, you can get really, really uh, frustrating when you feel like you have to upgrade everything at the same time. It's just It just goes through way too much resources. So if you break it down into these steps, part one, part two, part three, and then part four. But um, part one is your basics, part two, advanced basics, part three, intermediate and part four advance and that's how I'm going to show you how to increase it and if you follow these steps you're going to have a good little um, colony so I'm like level eight and I'm already at 46,000 power and like a lot of people at this level are actually a lot lower power than that because they don't sort of work on it too too much so that's that's it for today thanks so much for joining me bye